One topic often debated in the Undertale community is the age of our protagonist, Frisk. Despite the game now being 7 years old, there still isn't any proper consensus on the matter. This raises an interesting question. Does Undertale actually provide us with enough information to make a proper approximation of Frisk's age? There are three factors that will help in determining how old Frisk is. The first one is their physical appearance. The second is their mentality, going from their personality to what they know or don't. The third is the way Frisk is treated by other characters, as well as what others expect Frisk would know or be able to do. Real-world data can be used to confirm how kids of a certain age appear, both mentally and physically. By comparing what we know of Frisk to this data, we can begin to approximate their age. First things first, there is one thing that the game makes extremely clear. Frisk is still a child. Several characters refer to Frisk as such on numerous occasions. Gerson and Toriel, both of whom had seen humans before, and thus would have been able to assume their age, separately come to the conclusion that Frisk is still young enough to be going to school. Toriel even offers to be their teacher herself. Frisk also wears a striped shirt, which in the world of Undertale is associated with children. The question then becomes, how young of a child are they? The first thing to take into account is that Frisk can read and write. Reading is a skill that is usually developed by children near the age of 4 or 5. Writing is where it gets more interesting. In the true pacifist route, Frisk delivers a letter written by Undyne to Alphys. Based on Frisk's appearance and the situational context, Alphys makes the assumption that Frisk was able to have written the whole letter. As Alphys is familiar with anime, she should have a fairly good idea what humans of varying ages look like and be able to tell more or less how old Frisk is. Even after having read what the letter was about, she still considers Frisk as the one behind it being perfectly believable. Of course, this letter was written by Undyne, who is an adult. Undyne is also implied to have a decent amount of experience with writing letters. This means that Frisk looks old enough for Alphys to assume that they are able to write as well as an adult one, or at least close enough that mistaking Undyne's writing for Frisk would be reasonable. She also assumes a kid their age would be willing to ask someone on a date in the first place, if only for fun. She only accepts it as a pretend date to make them feel better, as Frisk is too young for her to take the request seriously. Then again, Alphys does get most of her knowledge on humans from anime, where romance teams are often brought up with pretty young characters, so maybe what Alphys thinks is normal isn't the most reliable source here. This isn't the only time where people believe Frisk would be capable of proper writing either. Metaton claims in the essay question that Frisk would be capable of writing a book if the essay prompt is long enough. The narrator, who is shown on multiple occasions to be able to read Frisk's mind, also insinuates that Frisk would be able to write a letter. While the very basics of writing come at an earlier age, the ability to write full, meaningful sentences with proper punctuation doesn't typically come before age 7 to 10, a number that could get even higher depending on the country. Writing skills comparable to that of adults, however, is something that typically comes in the 10 to 13 age range. Now, considering Alphys' judgment may have been skewed by the abrupt surprise of Frisk's love confession, I believe it would be justified to add an extra year of margin of error on the younger side of the spectrum. In any case, that would make Frisk at least 9, even if they had learned the skill at a younger age than average. The next notable detail about Frisk is that they have no interest in toys at all. They are either too old for them, or have lost interest for another reason. Children fully losing interest in traditional toys is something that usually happens somewhere from preteens to early teenage years. However, when it comes to the topic of playing, Toriel also assumes that Frisk would be young enough to have fun by playing with the leaves, and it appears that he was correct. That seems to be pushing Frisk more towards the younger side of that spectrum. Frisk enjoying childish activities is far from a one-time occurrence either. They also do things such as using the Royal Guard's armor as a muscular bongo. On the other hand, they also must have been able to climb Mount Ebbet, which is certainly not the easiest feat for a young child. Sans is well adept at analyzing people by looking at their faces. On a few occasions, he seems to assume that Frisk would find his jokes entertaining, and thus that they would have a somewhat childish sense of humor, like him. He also appears to think that Frisk would find his secret passwords funny, which somebody in their mid to late teens would most likely not. But something even less fitting for that age range is being intimidated by the size of a pie, which is a thing that happens to Frisk. Look Frisk, I understand being afraid of the Amalgamates, but a pie? Really? A pie? <laughs> 
Giftrot is a monster that was decorated by teenagers in the past, so when Frisk arrives, it assumes them to be one as well. However, Giftrot here isn't really a reliable source, as it is suffering from confirmation bias. At best, it hints that Frisk is close enough to their teenagers that it would be possible to mistake them for one. Now, one option that appears in this game considerably more than it probably should for a game playing as a child is the option to flirt with the enemy. Frisk's affinity with flirting is a bit odd, to say the least. The way that Frisk flirts is also worth noting. Sometimes their flirting seems childish or in a joking tone. On other instances, however, Frisk shows that they are actually capable of flirting properly if they want, by complementing physical appearance or interests. Whilst Frisk's flirting is obviously not serious, between that, the fact that they set up the two royal guards and help out with them dying, or that they ask burger pants for romantic advice, it does seem that Frisk has at least somewhat of a developing interest in romance. Interest in romance itself sometimes begins at a slightly younger age than that, but this kind of non-serious flirty behavior usually doesn't happen before pre-teens, especially when the approach is as direct as the one Frisk uses. What is also important when it comes to Frisk flirting is the way other characters react to it. They find Frisk's flirting as being more adorable than anything. Toriel even says she would pinch their cheek. This means that Frisk is both old enough to know how to flirt and young enough for their attempts at flirting with adults to seem cute or adorable rather than awkward. Again, that seems to be something the preteen range fits best. Any older than that and things would start getting a little weird. Another interesting thing to note is that Frisk knows certain things that younger kids usually do not know yet. For instance, we have this test monster frogget dialogue that didn't make it into the final game for um, obvious reasons. As the narrator says, geez Frisk, really? We have two other instances of this that did make it into the final game though. Sans makes a joke comparing them to a furry, fully expecting Frisk to get the joke and to know what a furry is. If they were under the age of 10, things like furries or raunchy phrases would likely be inapplicable. The narrator also makes a similar joke about the royal guards. Keeping in mind that the narrator is shown to be able to read Frisk's mind and that Frisk can hear them, they wouldn't be saying this unless they knew Frisk was capable of understanding what their joke was about. The narrator in general doesn't treat Frisk like a little child either. While the previous joke already speaks for itself, they do not mind using words such as sexy in their descriptions, or joking about Frisk's incoming death. If the child were younger, it is unlikely the narrator's dialogue would be so bold. The next thing that could come in handy when determining Frisk's age would be to find their height and compare it to that of real kids. Does any of the artwork by Toby or Temi allow to do this? Well, Temi Cheng's artwork tends to be unreliable when it comes to Frisk's height. In this artwork, they are the height of a literal toddler. In this one, however, Frisk is taller than Ness, who is 13 years old. This image also serves as an example of the fact that drawing children as being very little, no matter the person, is an integral part of Teng Cheng's art style, and as such, trying to find Frisk's age through it is pointless. This path is a dead end. That leaves us with only the game itself as a potential source. When it comes to measuring the height of any Undertale character, the first thing to be aware of is that the overworld sprites are not always representative of what Toby imagined for the characters. This is because he put more intention into detail than into size accuracy. A good example of it would be this scene, here, how his face doesn't actually triple in volume, and he's not taller than Frisk. This was just done for the sake of having more space to make Flowey a better laughing sprite than this. While the overworld sprites remain good approximations in general, any measurement done with them has a pretty large margin of error. Overworld objects and measurements may not always match up with their real-life counterparts, so measuring pixel sizes is not guaranteed to be reliable. However, Undertale's game sprites were actually based around the size of Frisks. In fact, Toby didn't add any proper sprites aside from theirs until the game's demo was finished. This means that Frisk Sprite in particular is actually one of the only sprites in the whole of Undertale that we know is accurate in terms of height, and thus can be measured. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. There is still a problem. The problem is that whatever we choose to measure Frisk with could itself not be accurate, which would render the result unreliable anyway. For instance, basketballs have a standard size in real life, 
But since those basketballs were made bigger than they showed for detail purposes, measuring Frisco's basketballs would not provide an accurate result and make Frisk seem smaller than they really are. Because of this issue, the multiple attempts by fans to calculate Frisk's height throughout the years using pixel measurements all ended up with different answers. If the reference used to measure Frisk width isn't accurate, then neither will be the result. The only way to get an accurate measurement of Frisk would be to measure them using a reference that, in addition to having standardized dimensions, is specifically called out by the game as being size accurate as well. So, um, do we have such a thing anywhere? Alright, so using this specifically regular size sink to measure Frisk, they end up being 147 centimeters, or 4 feet 10. Looks like the Temi one actually had it right after all. By comparing this to the World Health Organization's data on the height of children related to their age, Frisk would seem to be slightly bigger than the average 11 years old, but slightly smaller than the average 12 years old. As far as height is concerned, it would seem that Frisk's best fit is once again right in the middle of the pre-teen range. There is another thing regarding height that needs to be pointed out. Children of male and female sex do not always have the same average height depending on age. Starting from 14, children of male sex tend to be taller. This means that making a character 13 years old or younger allows to make them look more androgynous, which is something that we know for a fact Toby Fox was trying to do with Frisk. Of course, all the things mentioned in this video are based on averages. As such, they should be taken with a grain of salt, as, for all we know, Frisk might be ahead on certain things, or behind on others. But as far as what the game shows us goes, it would seem that Frisk is most likely somewhere in their pre-teens.